Hey, hello, greetings, and welcome back to the Biosampler Summary. I'm John with the Lynch Lab at Duke University, and this is the third segment. If you haven't taken a look at the first two, the introduction overview and the assembly part one, I might recommend that you take a look at those before continuing. In this section, we are going to be building this lower housing with the electronics, going through all of that. In the last segment, we built the Cartesian system and the sample block. So we have a lot to cover today. We're going to go through heat set inserts and how to prepare our walls for the assembly of the box. We're going to go through the electronics, the PCB, printed circuit board, as well as the components on there. We're going to go through how to set up a Raspberry Pi and then we're going to put it all together. We're going to go through the pump housing and attaching that right on the Cartesian system. So a lot to cover, so let's get started. All right, so most of our walls here for the housing are going to use these heat set inserts. And for these, you're going to take a soldering iron, put your M3 heat set insert tip in there, and then get it heated up. Notice on my soldering iron here, I keep it around 700. When I'm soldering normally, I leave it at 650, but for these heat set inserts, we want to do it a little bit hotter so they sink right in. Now, first on the heat set inserts, notice that there's two sides to them. There's a directionality. One side has a little bevel on the inside so that you can get the screw started. The other side is kind of just flat. So make sure that you're putting it in with the bevel coming on the outside. Also, when you look through these, some of them, if you buy cheap ones like I did, sometimes the hole's not perfectly in the center. Sometimes there's no bevel. There's some flaws, and sometimes they're a little bit shorter. So make sure that you get ones that all look the same. So to do this, I normally start with it just like that, with the bevel on the outside. You're going to get it set up, heating, and then start to push a little bit, and it should sink right in as it heats up. I am pushing a little bit. It's going in fairly easily. We want it to be kind of just below the surface and flat. The biggest thing is to get it in straight. And then once it's in in a good place, take it right out. If you don't get it in perfectly at this stage, you can put your soldering iron back in and kind of move it around a little bit to fix it. Now I do want to show you, so this is the, the wall that our pie is going to go on right here. And we have four holes here for M2 heat set inserts and four holes here for our relay board that are using M3 heat set inserts. So you'll notice some of these holes, they're 5.3 millimeters wide and a little bit narrower down at the bottom so that you can, there's some extra plastic to sink the heat set insert into. But these extra holes on the outside, these ones are actually for screw heads, so don't put heat set inserts there. So I just want to go over quickly where the actual heat set inserts are. So on this piece, there's four here for the relay board. There's four M2 here for the Pi. And then there's two more M3 that are in these ones here. So now if there's a heat set insert that's going into a block like this, you need to put it right on the edge of the table so that you can give the back a little support while you're pushing it in. If you don't do this while you're pushing it in, the block will heat up and kind of bend. So I generally hold it right like this, get it started, and then again, same deal, push it right in with that support backing the block, and it should sink right in. Now remember the soldering iron is very hot, so just be careful here. This one went in very well. It's just below the surface, but nice and flat. A bevel on the outside. Let's do one more here. Get it started. Let's 
Perfect, just like that. So again, on the pie wall here, there's four here for the relay board. There's four M2 for the pie. There's two more M3 here on the side. For the bottom where the PCB is gonna go, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven M3 on the bottom. There's two more M3 here. And then these two at the back are for screws. So those two don't get heat set inserts. The power wall gets a bunch of them. There's four here for the butt converter, four for the five volt power module, four for the 24 volt power module, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven around the edge. There's only two over here for screws that don't get heat set inserts. The top, they're all on the outside, but all of these ones are going to get heat set inserts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven heat set inserts there. The wall with the power socket, there's two here that do not get heat set inserts. Another two here, three that do not get heat, heat set inserts. Now one, two, M3, three, four, M3 heat set inserts. On the back side here on this one, there's gonna be one on the front. This is actually the side you're gonna see. On the pump housing, there's four right on the inside there. And that's gonna be it. Now one more note here, the M2 heat set inserts for the Pi, there's no, at least I haven't found a heat set insert tip for that. So you're just gonna use the regular soldering iron tip of your soldering iron. And that makes it a tiny bit harder, but in general, just keep it straight, push it right in there. Not too much of a problem. All right, so once we have our walls all prepped with heat set inserts, we can go ahead and start assembling them. So the first section here is going to be the power source wall. This is the front wall and one of the side walls with the socket. We've got three different power source modules on here, the 5 volt, 3 amp for the Pi. There's the 24 volt, 6 to 9 amp that's rated for 6 amp, 9 max. The buck step down converter over here. So this one's gonna take our tw 24 volts, bring it down to 12 volts for some parts of the system. Over here, we've got our power socket. So I do, do wanna start with going through that. The ground terminal here has two black ground wires coming off of it. The middle terminal is the neutral terminal and the furthest one is the live terminal. So I always remember it. The live is furthest from the ground here. So it goes ground, neutral, live. Next, there's the switch over here. So the neutral terminal gets connected to the closer of the terminals on the switch. The live one goes to the further. Then the two ground wires are connected right in here to the corners of the two power modules. That's where the ground is. Now on those, I've got washers that are sandwiching the tinned end of the ground wire and those are screwed right into the heat set insert with M3 eight millimeter screws. Next, coming off of the switch here, there's the live and the neutral lead wires that go to the 24 volt module here. So again, it's going to go ground, neutral, live. And then similarly, two more wires come off that going to the five volt module. And again, it's going to go ground neutral live. If you have any questions about that or that doesn't quite make sense, there's some more pictures in the written instructions. Next over here, we have the connection to the buck converter. So we have two positive terminals and two negative terminals coming off the 24 volt module. One of each of those goes to the, tw the 12 volt step down buck converter. 
Coming off that, we have two 8-inch lead wires. I do want to note here, this is 18-gauge wire. It's a little bit thicker, so it can handle the current that's going through that one. 18-gauge wire going to the buck converter, and 18-gauge coming off of it. The other two 24-volt terminals, I have 20-gauge wire. You can use 22-gauge wire as well. But that's 24 volts coming off the 24 volt module, and that's going to plug into our PCB board, as well as the 12 volt ones that will plug into the PCB. We also have the AC adapter jack here, or sorry, DC barrel adapter jack here. There's listed on there, it's positive and negative terminals, so just match up from the 5 volt terminal, the 5 volt module. There's positive and negative coming off that that go right into that one. One more note on the direction of these. There is a marking that says in over here, plus minus in, and plus minus out here, as well as on each of these modules, there's an in and an out. The socket here has one heat set insert and one kind of open hole here. There's a fuse in that holder. Now, the last steps to prepare this are we are going to take our safety bracket here, and the safety bracket is just going to go over the power socket. Do remember, once this is plugged into a socket, this is live wires with 120, volt, 120 volts AC. So if you do touch those wires, you will electrocute yourself. So the safety bracket is just going to go right on top here, and there's a M3 16 millimeter screw with a nut that holds this in place. And then there's one more of these M3 screws for the other hole here. I also just forgot to mention there's a these other screws that I used, they're six millimeter pan or button head sc screws, and those should all fit right in. There was one, I think I got a bad heat set insert that didn't quite line up correctly, so I think I skipped one screw, but even two or three in each of those will be perfect to hold them in place. So next we've got the fan wall here. So this one's pretty simple. Looking at it from the exterior, we've got four 12 millimeter M3 screws with M3 nuts on the back there. Notice the label of the fan. It's a 60 millimeter fan. The label is going to go on the inside so that it blows in. The fan bracket just goes right on top after the fan slots in its socket there. And then this wire is also just going to feed through this hole in the grate. This socket over here is where the pie is going to go. And then there's extra holes for the heads of the screws to fasten that wall in place. To set up your Raspberry Pi, you're going to start by formatting the micro SD card. So you're going to go to sdcard.org slash downloads here, download the SD memory card formatter. When you install and open that program, it's going to look like this. Go to the drop down menu here and select the correct card that you want to format. Now don't, don't select the wrong one because you are going to wipe it. So once you've got the correct one selected, give it a title here, volume label, and then just say format, yes, and it's going to wipe it, put that volume label right in there. So once that is formatted, then you're going to go to raspberrypi.org slash downloads and download the Raspberry Pi imager for your respective operating system. Once that is then installed, it looks like this. So you're going to just choose the operating system. Raspbian is the default operating system we want. And then the SD card is going to be the one that we just formatted. And then say right. It's going to take a couple minutes. So as this finishes up here, I'm just going to talk you through the next couple steps, which I'm not going to show in the video. So when this finishes writing the operating system, you're going to eject your micro SD card and insert that into your Raspberry Pi. Also plug in a keyboard and a mouse in the USB ports and plug in a micro HDMI cable and connect that to a monitor. Then once those are all plugged in, you can plug in your 
uh, power source. So that's a 5 volt, 3.5 amp Raspberry Pi power source. And then that is going to boot up the Pi and it should come up on the screen. So as it boots, it's going to ask for some information. You select a location and a time zone, choose a new password, connect to a wireless network, and then it's going to ask you if you want to do a system update, and you should do that, so click Next, and then that will take a little time to download. Once that is complete, you want to restart your Pi, so to do that, open up the terminal application and type sudo reboot. That will restart your Pi, and then when that reboots, you want to open your terminal again and type sudo space apt-get space upgrade and if you have trouble with the spellings of some of these look at the written instructions I've provided and they'll all be in there so once you do sudo apt-get upgrade it will again download and install some things and then you want to again sudo reboot to reboot your Pi. So now once that comes up we are going to install Windows Desktop. I'm just going to go through the steps to install Windows Desktop here, and I would also recommend installing a VNC server, which comes preloaded on the Pi, but you do need to activate it. So there's a couple links down below to take care of that. The first is the raspberrypi.org documentation for remote access through VNC, and the second one is a tutorial through Adafruit that lets you make a boot script so that that VNC server will, will be activated when you boot your Pi automatically. So to set up Windows Desktop, you're going to again bring up the terminal and type sudo apt-get install xrdp. Next, once that is installed, you want to type hostname space dash capital I and this will give you the Raspberry Pi's IP address. Next, you can open your Windows Remote Desktop program and just enter that IP address and then it will connect your Pi. Okay, so now I'm using Microsoft Remote Desktop to get into my Pi and I just typed in my IP address there and then the username and password it asks you for are going to be the username is pi and the password that you just chose when you set up your pi. So now you get in and there's just a couple steps left. So you're going to open up your terminal window and first type sudo raspi-config. Now here you're going to go down to your interfacing options and then SPI and you want to enable it yes perfect we've enabled that you can go over to finish here next you're going to type git clone HTTP s colon slash slash github dot com slash adafruit slash capital A Adafruit underscore Python MCP 3008 dot get so that copied some files to our computer next we are going to CD change directory into the file we just downloaded So now once in that file, you are going to type sudo python setup.py install. And that's just going to run a setup file from that folder. Once that is installed, you want to also do pip3 install adafruit-gpio. Lastly here, pip3 install adafruit-mcp3008. Okay, once those are installed, we've got just a couple left, so sudo apt 
get install LibreOffice. So this LibreOffice package is kind of similar to Microsoft Office. It's got a writer like Word and a spreadsheet program like Excel. I'm going to be using those. Okay, so once those are all installed, I just closed out of my terminal window. I'm going to open up a new one here and do CD desktop. Once I'm on the desktop, I'm going to type git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash duke lynch lab, couple capital letters there, slash bio sampler dot git. And this command is just going to download the necessary files to run the biosampler. sampler. can close that and then all the files are going to be right here. So I'm just going to move these to the desktop. This is important so that we have the correct file structure and different functions can find each other. I'm going to delete this extra folder here. And then I'm going to open up my terminal one more time here and type sudo nano slash etc slash rc dot local and this is going to bring up a file I'm going to come down to the bottom here and right above exit I'm going to add a line that says sudo python slash home slash pi slash desktop slash bio sampler slash boot dot pi and then I'm going to control X and do I want to save yes to that file name hit enter and now you are set up so just to show you in there there's a boot file that is important to set the valves in the correct location as the pi boots up so that's what we just set that up now one more note on the wireless communications so I would recommend that installing that VNC server you can then um, wire, wirelessly connect from anywhere not just lo your local network and secondly you do want to get a static IP address set up on here currently I have given that a couple tries and the, the tutorials I ha I've found have not successfully allowed me to do that so I'm still working on that but currently if your router or internet resets it will reset your IP address and then you need to reconnect a monitor to rediscover the IP address so that you can once again wirelessly connect if you have a static IP address set up then you can just keep the same IP address always and always have a headless robot. Now once you've got your Pi all set up we can set up the Pi wall so this is going to be the back wall there's some heat set inserts in there we've got the Pi screwed in place with M2 screws on these ones I only had eight millimeter screws but you kinda want about four millimeter screws so with my eight millimeters I had to put two nuts in on each one just as spacers and that worked out fine I did have another heat set insert that kind of went in wrong so I really only used three screws but that's plenty to hold that in place on the back side of this you'll see a picture here showing the connection of the DC barrel jack here to the back pads of the Pi now that solder connection is fragile so I've just got this piece of tape on here as some strain relief so I don't pull those off over here I've got the dual channel relay board and attached to that I have made this four wire ribbon cable there's just JST XH four pin connectors on each end of that with the crimp terminals crimp connectors and then I just want to make sure one wire of that at least is black to designate the direction as this is the ground over here and then it will connect to the board correctly on the other side of the relays we have two black wires, the ground wires that are going to go in the COM center screw terminal and then two red wires these are all tinned up on the end, the two red wires are going to go in the NO for normally open screw terminals so next we have our PCB, that's printed circuit board let's talk our way through this one here so when you order these, I ordered mine from JLC PCB and you can get about five of them for it's about 
$90 plus shipping and handling from China. It takes them three or four days to make it, three or four days to ship it. You get them in about a week. And so all in all, it's five of them for about $120. It does come like this with you know all the holes, everything you need. There's a, a Gerber file for this and the design file. So you can just send this right off to them and just order it if you want to go that direction. The other option is you can also send it out to a professional company to assemble it for you. You just provide them, again, the Gerber file and then the bill of materials of all the electronic components, and they will assemble it for you. Now, I like soldering, so I took care of this myself. So here's our PCB. It's got everything on there. And let's talk through some of these components. Backside looks like this. There's a lot of con connections. There's 45 things on here. Let's go through them. So first of all, we have our two by 20 pin male header. That's where the Raspberry Pi is going to connect to. We've got two of these MOSFETs, the um, IRF3708 MOSFET. We've got two stepper motor drivers, the DRV8825. We've got two capacitors, assortment of resistors, some different ones in there. We've got two transistors over here, the 2N2222 transistors. We've got JST-XH connectors. There's four of the two pin, two of the three pin for our um, end stop switches over here. We've got one, two, three of the four pin, two for our stepper motors, one for our relay over here. We've got a bunch of these two pin screw terminals. There's a couple diodes. This one right over here, this is the MCP3008 analog to digital converter chip that's going to read our sensors, our thermal probes, as well as our fluid sensors. Now, Specific connections. So these are all marked on the board. All the markings on the board even include the resistance values of the resistors, where those go, the direction of the MOSFETs and the transistors, the stepper motor drivers have some labels on there so you can get those in in the right direction, the capacitors here. The side with the stripe is the negative side. So there's a positive negative marking underneath that on the board. But negative is the side with the stripe on the capacitor. Resistors can go in any direction. Diodes also have a stripe to notify that direction. Um, I do want to comment on the four pin fan connectors here. So I initially started with four pins for the connectors. And then I decided you really only need two pins. So the system fan is going to be a two pin connector that comes off the 60 millimeter fan. The other one coming from the radiator fan starts with four pins, but then I just chopped that. I had to extend the wires anyway, so I figured I would just extend two wires and insulate the other two. So I ended up with a two pin connector on there. The biggest thing on this is the positive and negative. Positive is the upper one, looking at it from this direction, and negative is the lower of the two metal pins. And those are marked on the board as well. A couple other markings over here with the end stop switches. There's three pins and the red wire from the, the end stop switch goes in the bottom pin here where it says red. Similarly, there's a marking for red on the four pin stepper motor JST connectors here. The screw terminals here, there's one for the pump, TEC thermoelectric cooler, as well as the 24 volts. Those each have a positive negative, so you can't really mix those up. The 12 volt as well, positive negative. The valves down here, we have valve one and valve two. That's where the yellow wires from the two valves are going to connect. On the other side, these will connect to our relay module. COM1 and COM2 are the black wires coming off the relay module. And normally open one and normally open two are the red wires also coming from that 
dual channel relay module. Up here, these are going to be our fluid sensors. So I initially had 5 volt ground in, out, whatever. I simplified that. So the four wires coming off the fluid sensors are white, green, black, and red. You just stick them right in there, and it's going to be fluid sensor number one and fluid sensor number two. That should about cover it for the PCB. We are going to connect it right now to our bottom. This is going to go on the bottom. And I know already a couple of these heat set inserts also didn't go in quite perfectly. So we're only going to use a few of the screws. All right, attached PCB. One more comment I want to make about this. So if you go ahead and order this online or through a company, it is important to specify the copper weight. So this does need two ounce copper weight. It starts at one, two, and then I think it goes up from there. But two ounce, it's the thickness of the copper traces that are going to be on top of this. And for the Peltier over here, you do need two ounces copper weight to make sure that there's enough copper for that current to go through, or else the board's going to heat up. It's going to be a problem. So I just commented on this. This is the view of the backside of the Cartesian system. And I did also extend the wire coming off the, the fan here. So in order to do that, I took the sheath here, and I just pulled it back. It exposes four wires in there. And there's a green and a yellow center wire. Yellow is positive, and green is negative. And so I just cut the connector right off there. And then my goal was to get to this two pin JST XH connector. So I first crimped two terminals on there. I put it in the two pin connector to make sure I could get that on there correctly. Then I inserted these wires into two pieces of heat shrink tubing. There's one medium piece as well as one smaller piece. Then I stripped about a centimeter off the end of these two wires, as well as the green and yellow from the fan. And then I twisted, say, for the yellow wire, I twisted the two yellow wires together. And there was that small piece of heat, heat shrink tubing on that already. I covered the connection of the, the solder joint of those two wires. Then I made the second solder connection between the two green wires, and I put the medium piece of heat shrink tubing over all of it. So there are four wires in there. Only two are used, and they extend by about eight inches to the two-pin female JST-XH connector. So thermal probes. I have two thermal probes here that I made myself as I tried some other ones I found cheap on Amazon, but I did not like those. You can't find a data sheet for them, which tells you specific beta values, important characteristics to know when you are calculating temperature from the resistance value. So these are 10,000 ohm NTC thermistors. So I took my thermistor, two wires, approximately 18 inches, and stripped your wires a little bit off each end. I have two pieces of heat shrink tubing on here. So again, there's a medium one and a small one. I made one solder connection from one lead of the thermistor to one wire. And I covered that with the small piece of heat shrink tubing, which is about that long. So it does cover the whole lead of the thermistor along with the solder joint. Then I made my second solder connection and covered everything with the medium piece of heat shrink tubing. I heated that up to shrink it down. I twisted up the wire here, and I just put a piece of electrical tape. It might be a good idea to use heat shrink tubing on this instead, because this is already a little bit sticky and nasty. There's two crimp connectors on the end with the JST-XH two-pin female t connector on the end. Now, to waterproof it, I heated up a tin can of hot glue, just chopped up sticks. Tin, put them in a tin, and I put that right on a hot plate, dip it right in, and then once it is nice and covered, I took a lighter to then heat it up again and kind of smooth it out with a stick. So you do want to make sure it is fully covered. There's no holes. I did cover it up to about here, and then use a lighter to again heat it up, smooth it out, wick off any extra glue, and then you've got a couple waterproof thermistor thermal probes. 
So for the pump housing here, you're going to take your peristaltic pump, put that right in the hole with two 20 millimeter M3 screws and there's M3 nuts on the back. Before you put that one in, you do want to ex extend the wires here by about 18 inches and heat shrink tube the uh, connection points there. There's a red dot right on the back so you know where the red wire goes, black on the other one. The two three-way pinch valves, they're the 075P Biochem Fluidix pinch valves. They're just gonna slide right in and they're very tight so you actually need to take the stickers off to get them in and then they sit right on this ledge in the back. So there's nothing actually holding them in place, but they're in pretty tightly, so they'll kind of just rest there. The OPB 350 fluid sensor, that just slots right in the hole, and there's two 12 millimeter M3 scr screws and M3 nuts on the back holding that one in. Then once you've got everything in place, you can thread everything through this hole. Oh, one more thing about, so you want to take the two wires from this pinch valve, the one on the right, and you want to label those two number one. So that's going to be valve number one and number two. And then that helps you know where to plug it in on the circuit board later. So once that's labeled, thread everything through the hole. I've also taped up my fluid sensor wires so they're kind of together. And then you can just snake them through here, seal it right up. Perfect, one pump housing ready to go. So once you have your pump housing assembled here, we can get it right on the Cartesian system. So we're just gonna take the sample block off, put that back on in a second, and then I'm gonna tip this right on its side so I can get at these two T-nuts that we left in here. And this is gonna go in right like this. Awesome, tighten up those screws. Got all the wiring coming out the back like everything else. And then we'll just put the sample block right back in. The box here should sit just over the pump housing. Those shouldn't interfere so that the pump housing's all the way at the bottom. All right, so now we have all of our walls assembled for the most part. We just need to make some connections, put the walls together. I'm going to walk you through where all these connections go again, and then the connections and the order of which to assemble the walls. And then I'm going to put it together and I will show you the result. It's kind of a big wiry mess, so it's going to be kind of hard for you to make sense of through the video. So again, once everything's assembled, let's start with the power wall. So the power wall is the power wall and the vent wall here, the socket as well. So you need to start with the socket popped out. And these two walls connect with two M3 eight millimeter screws. There's one here from the side and one more that goes in this way that's underneath the socket. That's part of why the socket's out. Then the connections, so coming off your buck converter, you've got your positive and negative 12 volt that are going to connect to this screw terminal, mark 12 volt. You're, you've got your Pi connection that's going to plug right into your DC barrel connection of your Pi. You can do that at the end. You've got your 24 volts here that's going to, positive and negative, that's going to plug right into the 24 volt screw terminal right here labeled. Next, you're going to flip this up, and there's going to be two screws holding these together. They're going to fit right in like this. And the two screws, one's going to be right over here that goes in from this side direction, and then there's one more here that's under the socket. So you still need the socket to be out, and it goes in from the top. Once that one's in place, you can then put your socket back in, put that safety bracket right over the top screw with the top screw is an M3 16 millimeter, 
M3 nut on the inside, and then there's going to be one of those six millimeter M3 screws to hold in the socket from the bottom. So you've got all your power connections connected, your sockets in. Next, you're going to connect everything from the Cartesian system. So all these wires coming off the Cartesian system, they need to thread through the back of this hole that's on your pie. So this is going to be the back wall. Everything from the Cartesian system in the exterior needs to thread in through this wall, come in, and then you're going to make some more connections. So you've got valve two is unlabeled here, yellow wires. Valve one we labeled previously. So valve two is gonna go right to this screw terminal, marked V2, and valve one to this screw terminal, valve one. V2 fluid sensors, so they are in the order that the fluid sees them. So valve, sorry, fluid sensor number one is on the pump housing because it, the fluid will see that fluid sensor before the one on the needle. So this coming from the pump housing is fluid sensor one that's going to be plugged into these two terminals. And again, there's four wires, red, black, green, white. They're marked red, black, green, white. Fluid sensor number two comes from the one on the gantry next to the needle. And again, red, black, green, white. These screw terminals here, the second fluid sensor, red, black, green, white. We have our extended fan for the radiator. That's going to go in fan two here. And the important thing here is that the yellow, which is the positive, is on the upper one. It is marked positive, positive negative. Next, we have the two Peltier thermoelectric cooler wires. These are also coming in through the back, and they're going to connect right over here to TEC, thermoelectric cooler, positive and negative. Then also from the pump housing, we have our pump wires, positive and negative. Those are going to go to this screw terminal marked pump, positive and negative. Once all of that is connected, then you are going to, the, the power wall is already connected to the base. Then you're going to put on your fan wall here. So your fan wall is going to go on from this side. It's got a couple. M3 eight millimeter screws to hold that on. And this fan wire is gonna connect right over here to fan one. And again, red positive to the upper pin, positive negative. Once that is on, you've got most of your box. And then the pie wall is the last one to go on. So you're going to connect your two black wires here to the two com over here. COM1 and COM2, COM1 from that to COM1, COM2 to COM2, and then your NO normally open one to normally open one, normally open two to normally open two. The relay cord here, remember we made sure that one of them is black for ground, so that's gonna go right in this pin over here that's marked ground. I actually have this backwards on here. Let's put that in the right way. Perfect. So ground goes to ground right over here. And then what else? We also have two wires for the stepper motors. Those we are going to leave unplugged right this second because we need to calibrate our stepper motor drivers before we plug in our stepper motors. That's pretty important. We need to make sure we have the right current going to the stepper motors. So we want to leave the stepper motors unplugged to start. The end stop switch, the three pin, we can also plug in over here on the side. And it also has a directionality with the red wire going to the bottom pin here. Those should all be coming in through the back, the back wall here. So lastly, you're going to close up the back, but we're probably going to wait a second to do that one.
No wonder these pipes don't work. They're full of wires. So now that we have most of the connections made here, we again are just missing our two stepper motors and one of our fans, the system fan. Basically everything else should be plugged in. We've got our Pi plugged in, our ribbon cable from the Pi to the 40 pin header there. And now we need to power up the Pi to run the sleep script, which is going to energize our stepper motor drivers. And then we can take a voltage reading from the trim pot here. And then we're going to tune that to make sure that those are getting the correct amperage, the correct current. So now I do want to put in a disclaimer here. Remember again on the back of the socket there are live wires and we are going to plug this in right now with no protection. So just make sure that you are careful when you're plugging it in, turning it on, and then we're only going to run it for about five minutes with uncovered live wires. So just be very careful there. All right, so we've got our Pi powered on. It is connected to a monitor through the micro HDMI cable as well as a keyboard and a mouse attached so we can use that briefly. Now again, there are live wires on the back of this power socket, so be very careful of those. Don't put your fingers anywhere near that. Before we do our stepper motor drivers, let's just check a couple things here. So if I put my positive and negative leads across the terminal of the 24 volt module, I'm reading voltage on my multimeter and it reads 23.9 volts, so that's perfect. On my 12 volt step down buck converter, I'm gonna do the same across the terminal and I see 12.1 volts, that's perfect. This one here, when you get it, it can read a little bit low, so right over in the corner here, there's a little trim pot with a little screw, and if you turn that screw clockwise, it's going to increase the voltage, or counterclockwise, it's going to decrease the voltage, but again, you just wanna tune that until it reads 12 volts, 12.1 is fine. Now the five volt module, let's just check that and we see 5.08 volts coming off that one. So that one should definitely be below 5.25 volts, which is the standard Pi power supply. If you are higher than that, you will probably fry your Pi. Now for the stepper motor drivers, I'm going to start by attaching my ground lead here to an alligator clip. And the other end of that alligator clip is right on the other side of this ribbon cable from you, but it is attached to one of the pads of the PCB. So the screw holes of the PCB are all connected through an internal trace and those are all grounded. So that is connected there. My positive lead I'm going to connect to another alligator clip and this one is going to get attached to my metal screwdriver. So now when I go in here and I touch the corner of this stepper motor driver, the trim pot, be very careful not to touch anything else reading 10 millivolts, 9 millivolts, basically nothing because the driver is currently sleeping. It's off. So in order to turn it on, you're going to go to your terminal, open up the test files folder and the sleep.py script. And when you run this script, it's going to energize those stepper motor drivers for five minutes. So now in that five minutes, we can tune them. So let's check this again here. Alligator clip on the metal screwdriver. So now we are seeing 1.6 volts. So the important equation here is this voltage reading should be half of the amperage that the stepper motors are rated for. So our stepper motors are rated for 0.7 amps. So we want this voltage to be 0.35 volts or probably a little bit lower so that we have some error. Oh, so counterclockwise is increasing. Clockwise is decreasing. It goes pretty quick here. So I'm turning it counterclockwise and we're going to get down to 0.5 so 300 millivolts. Oh, went a little too low there. It's 
very finicky. All right, 307 millivolts, that's perfect. Now the second one's kind of hidden under the ribbon cable here, so I'm just going to take care of that. Awesome, so both of those are ready to go. Now you want to make sure to close out of this script properly. Hit Control C, and that should close out of that. So the next step here is we want to calibrate our thermal probes. So to start, you want to power off your device. So flip the switch, unplug it, make sure there's no power going to the wires on the back of this. Then you're going to unplug one of your thermal probes. So I've unplugged thermal probe two here. This is an empty socket. Next, I have a my ground lead again attached to an alligator clip, which is grounded on the PCB on one of those pads. I have my multimeter here reading voltage and I'm going to stick my positive probe right into the thermal probe socket here and I'm getting 3.309 volts going to that thermal probe. So I'm going to write down that value 3.309. Next we need to find our 5 volts. So 5 volts goes to the two pins on the MCP chip that are in the corner closest to the ribbon cable and the thermal probes. So if I put my positive lead right on one of those, I get 5.05 volts. You want to make sure not to touch anything else in there. But I get 5.05 volts, and I'm going to write down that value as well. Now that we've done that, we're going to come back to those values later, so you can, for now, power everything off. So now that we have those values for our thermal probes and we've got our stepper drivers all set, we can make some of these last connections. So I've reconnected the thermal probe. I've connected my two stepper motors here in their respective locations. They're labeled to the X goes to the X. I am leaving just my system fan off. We're going to connect that at the end. So to close this thing up, first going to pop the socket out of the power wall and I've got an 8 millimeter screw inserted right on the back of this and I'm going to put a second one right here and then I'm going to get this power wall situated Two screws hold that one in place for now. Once those are in, we can put our socket back in and get our safety bracket on there. Now that those are in place, we are going to kind of try to get all these wires in here as best we can. And let's connect up this fan. Once that fan's connected, we can get this wall right on here. There's just two screws on that fan wall. Now let's continue getting these wires all piled in.
Great, so we've got all the wires in there. Everything's looking good. We've got all these sides connected with eight millimeter screws. There's one more little step here, so we need to take the top of this box and get it on the bottom of this, the Cartesian system. All right, we're almost there. So we've got our box almost closed up here, all the wires inside. We've got our Cartesian system and the lid here. So I've got four T-nuts on the top flat surface and the underside, there's four 12 millimeter M5 screws that go in from that side. Now the back surface is gonna be the one with all the heat set inserts on the long side. We're gonna put that towards the back of the Cartesian system. We just need to get this right on the bottom. So I've got these on pretty loosely and I'm just gonna slot these right in here. So I tighten those up on the bottom here and now we just need to rotate this like this. Get all those wires in there one more time. And it should slot right on top just like that. And just a couple more eight millimeter M3 screws in the sides in the back. So look at that, how cool is that? We've got the top mounted to the base here. On the back I put on this cable guard to kind of hold these wires together. We've also got these 3D printed wire clips if you want to slot those in. The V-slot rails, they just twist right in. You can hold some of these Cartesian wires to those rails. On the front here, I did also put on the waste tube bracket, so that's just two M5 8 millimeter screws, and you want it right about at this level, so that when you put the tube in like this, the waste tube here is just a 15 mil centrifuge tube with a section of tubing on the bottom of that. The bottom of the cap thread is right on top of the bracket, and it is just about at this level. It should be centered with the center in between those two rows of sample tubes and then you can take a zip tie and just put it right through this notch here. Sweet, we're ready to go. I do wanna thank you again for taking the time to follow along here. In the next sections, we're going to be taking a look at the software as well as the operation of the biosampler, so definitely check those out. Hey again, I just wanted to take a quick second here to acknowledge the support we received for this project from DMC Biotechnologies, as well as the guidance from Dr. Michael Lynch. Thanks for helping make it happen.